Hi folks, so today I'm going to talk about the court system of England and Wales, you know, and pose the question, is it fit for purpose and what you need to do in order to get the best out of running your claim and how to manage your claim and how to manage the courts themselves. The court system is pretty underfunded these days. Judges are extremely busy, they haven't got enough staff and there are increasing numbers of litigants in person with their you know, paperwork and their claims, God bless them, in a right royal pickle. So you, you've got to be careful and you've got to lead the courts by the hand and not expect that they're going to do the work for you. Okay. Now this vlog in the A to Z series is you know, just a golden nugget of knowledge, bite-sized. If you want to drill into the detail then I've now released two parts of Flying Solo, my book on how to represent yourself in the UK courts, uh, the introduction and part one which deals with these sorts of issues. Uh, you can find it freely, well not freely, you have to pay for it I'm afraid. You can find it readily available on Amazon. I'm going to be I'm not quite completed all of, the, all of the parts. Once I have I'll be producing one you know proper um, you know detailed in-depth tone which will sit on your shelf if you're running your own litigation or defending a claim and be your very own uh, paperback win. Okay so the court as I say is a little bit of an antiquated animal at least at the county court level and if you're running a small claim fast track or multi-track almost certainly these are claims of anywhere up to fifty thousand pounds it's going to be the county courts that are dealing with it a district judge almost certainly perhaps a deputy uh, district judge. Uh, now, first thing is, don't expect to be able to get somebody on the phone, okay? Now, courts do vary. There are some good courts and there are some stinkers, quite frankly. Um, and you can, there's also, you know, a centralized system. So you might, so even if you do get through to someone on the phone, you're actually not getting through to the court itself. You're not getting through to the clerk who's responsible for handing the papers up to the judge. So don't be deceived in thinking that if you get through to the call centre, that's, you know, that's all, all the work that you need to do. Um, the other thing is that, you know, the, you've got email and you've got post. Uh, you mustn't send, let's say you're filing a claim or a defence, send uh, in your, you know, you may be worried about the fact that the, the county court system is a little understaffed and you might want to send both by post and by email. Well, don't. Choose one. Uh, the other thing is payment. Uh, you've, you'll be coming across court fees. Uh, don't forget, not just for a claim, but if you file a defence with a counterclaim that attracts a court fee, how do you pay for it? Um, now, the short answer is I think it's best to use good old-fashioned checks. Mark it out to HMCTS, Her Majesty's Courts and Tri Tribunal Service. You can pay on the phone. Uh, again, you're in danger of the court trying to collect money on a card or a credit card over the phone and you not being available, and then they give up. This brings me on to the next point, which is you may get your papers sent back to you, you know, three weeks after you thought the claim had been issued because they've not been able to contact you for the court fees. Now, everything is about money these days. Every single transaction in our lives attracts a fee. It's the same with the court. So there's no fee, doesn't even get anywhere near a judge, just gets sent back to you. Don't forget that, you know, documents go missing. I wouldn't blame you if you did send something by post um, and you send it recorded delivery to make sure that the court had received it and you kept a receipt. And now it will happen at times that you'll turn up for a court hearing expecting that the judge has got all the papers in the case and he hasn't, yeah? Papers unfortunately do go missing. Uh, barristers, particularly young barristers that I work with in, in lower value claims, they actually turn up for hearings with three copies of everything. One for the judge, one for their opponent, one for themselves. Uh, now, there are some courts, and if you've ever dealt with a higher court, the high court, let's say the Chancery Division of Intellectual Property Courts, it's like, for us lawyers, it's like, oh my 
goodness gracious me, this is how it should be. You know, it's like dealing with a professional business and you get someone who actually knows the judge personally on the phone. Uh, and you can email them directly to a person. Uh, now, unfortunately, that just simply rarely applies in the case of the county court system. And personally, when I do get through to a court clerk who knows what he's doing, is actually in the court where my case has been processed, you know, it, it's, it's a surprise, unfortunately, more often than, than not. Now, another mistake that people make is they don't read footers from, from the court. If the court sends you an email and there'll be a long footer on it, it might have all sorts of important information. For example, what you need to put in the subject heading. If you don't put in the right information in the subject of your email, you know, you're frustrated, you've finally got your particulars of the claim drafted, you've filled in the claim form, you've written out a cheque, you like just want to press send, don't you? You've created PDFs, you just want to press send. Don't read the court guidelines on, for example, email filing. It'll tell you that there is a maximum megabytage. Um, don't quote me on it, but 50 megabytes last time I looked. Um, you know, there is um, you know, certain rules, uh, um, certain little footnotes in that uh, email footer from the court. Make sure that you read it, because if you don't and you're not compliant, who knows, you may well end up getting the whole thing back again, you'll be back at square one. You need to cooperate with the other side. It's quite actually quite important. So in a bit of litigation, you obviously are enemy, your your enemies with your opponent, defendant or claimant, and you may be tempted to like, oh, I'm not gonna copy them in this email to the court, you know, they can bloody well get the claim form themselves. Don't be making that mistake. You've got to wear two hats. One is you're the fighter pilot, you're in a dogfight with a dastardly opponent. The other is you've got to step back and be, the, be your own referee, particularly if you're the claimant. The claimant is expected to be the one who's doing all the case management. So don't try and be sneaky. Serve, which is the word for sending to your opponent documents, yeah, uh, as well as filing to the court. Because if you don't, what will happen is you'll get to court, you'll have a hearing, and the court will say, well, I've got your papers, that's great, let's get cracking. And then the defendant will say, oh, Your Honour, I haven't got this document. And the judge looks at you and says, didn't you serve it on your opponent? And you go, well, no, it's the responsibility of the court to send it out to them. Don't, don't, don't be doing that case um, hearing vacated, everybody's wasted the time, you may even end up on the wrong end of a cost order. So do be uh, a neutral referee when it comes to dealing with the case management matters when you're dealing, when you're dealing with the court. You, know, you pretty much most times expect that any correspondence you send into the court, you should also be sending or serving on your opponent. Uh, now, one sort of final thing on the housekeeping side. The N1 claim form, which if you're a, uh, a claimant you'll, you'll be using in more cases than not, in a typical Part 7 type claim, you know, it has a big box on the first page. Use this as a way to lead the court by the nose, particularly if you've got a slightly complicated claim. I'll just give you an example. Not all claims are monetary value claims. Some might be for a or declaration from the court that you jointly own a property, for example. Uh, or, I don't know, I've even had, I've had cases where retur the return of a pet, the return of a cat to uh, the defendant in a case. Uh, use that box, but also financial mis-selling claims. Uh, use that box judiciously to help guide the court. Okay, uh, another example might be um, an example that applies in the case of where you're asking for a declaration that you half share a property, something that's not specifically pounds, shilling and pence. There'll be the issue of what court fee uh, is, is um, appropriate under the rules. Uh, I don't have time to go into the court fees here, but suffice to say, if you aren't paying the usual 5% or 4.5% if you file online the claim value and you say it's not a monetary claim, explain in that box what it is. 
Yeah, it's a claim for an unspecified sum of money and EX50, the, the court fees form, easily traced by Googling online, tells uh, me that actually I only need to pay £308. Because you see, at the other end, is a court clerk can be looking at your papers, not a fully qualified judge who will understand. And he's going to go, oh, this is a claim, part seven, and one claim form. He might, if you're not careful, send it back to you, and you've wasted three, four, five, how, however many weeks, depending upon how busy that court is. Okay, finally, uh, online. Okay, so we all live in this uh, delightful technological online world. The courts are moving uh, online, but you know the wheels of justice, certainly the wheels of court administration, grind exceedingly slowly. And uh, we are definitely not there yet, but you can file online for any claims up to £100,000, money claims online, yeah? There are certain categories of claim where you can't, even if it is under £100,000, so you need to check on the money claims online website to make sure that your claim, most common claims, you know, most claims do, but you need to double check if you're unsure. They're also running a pilot, I think it's called Civil Claims Online, and that's for claims up to £10,000. That's a completely new thing, and you can just elect to go with that pilot. And uh, I, anecdotally, I was at a Law Society talk by someone who runs this in the Ministry of Justice, and they say that they're getting good feedback particularly like for a debt recovery claim they're finding that if someone uses the pilot quite quickly a defendant will immediately you know uh, admit the claim and, and cough up the money and the process can be quite uh, streamlined so for simple claims particularly perhaps where it's unlikely to be contested you might consider using the civil this new pilot Right, so, yes, so to conclude, I think you really do need to be leading the court by the nose, and you need to put yourself into the shoes of the judge. He's extremely busy, he's got a packed diary, he's got 12 different claims that he's got to process, and 12 different hearings of 10 minutes each on a, on a Monday morning. He does not want to be shuffling through papers and wondering where everything is. So you need to make sure that you've sent everything to the court well in advance, you know, properly paginated and in nice chronological order. Uh, this is one of the reasons why I do recommend people use post. For example, on money claims online, you can only fill in a box with a certain amount of particulars of claim before you then have to, you're told, you've got to produce a separate particulars of claim. If you can't fit it all into that box, that then means you're sending two sets of documents to the courts and you are tempting fate and the, the underfunded court system. It, you know, in terms of actually being confident that the judge is going to get both those documents and they're going to be added to the file when it comes to the hearing. I mean, that's the most frustrating thing is when you turn up for a hearing and the judge is just shuffling through the papers and, you know, particularly if you haven't, for example, included the other side or you haven't included them early enough in the chorus, your correspondence with the court, you can be in this frustrating situation where the whole hearing gets vacated. Um, now, that might, might, might all sound very negative, but actually, if you do it right, you get the jump on the opponent, you look proper professional and organised, a judge is far more likely to go with you, to go with someone who's professional. In fact, I would say, you know, probably even eight, nine times out of ten, when I get a client and I see that they're organised with their papers, I'm like, yeah, this is a winner. I, I, it's, it's, it's a mysterious, magical thing. I think partly the actual exercise of getting everything in apple pie order helps the claimant to weed out errors, uh, but also to have a sober look at their own case and not be over-egging the pudding and not, not, not asking for too much. And that's probably also a factor. Basically, make sure you and the judge are singing from the same hymn sheet and as a final backstop, a final security, bring a, along a couple of copies of everything to court with you as well. Well, thank you for tuning in. You can find more about us 
and about the services we offer to a support litigants in person on the courtswingman.com site. As I say, I've now released the introduction and part one of Flying Solo, which uh, drills into how to run your own claim in a very great detail indeed with all sorts of samples and templates and anecdotes and real life stories in the trenches as well. And uh, so it just, it just remains for me, for me to say, please subscribe, press the like button. If, if you've enjoyed this, um, email us if you'd like to be added to a subscriber list. Next up is a vlog in the A to Z series on track allocation, which is actually a really critical subject. You need to know what track your claim is going to be allocated on before you've issued the claim, in truth. So I shall be giving you the skinny on small, fast, and multi-tracks in the county court system. Thank you for tuning in. That's all for today. Look forward to vlogging to you in the very near future.